How's it going YouTube? Today we're back with a brand new video. Today's video is going to be me re-skimming this whole room. Um, we do it all in one go. So we have um, the walls you can see here in the picture plus a window wall just in behind um, the camera. So I actually got a, a few new tools on this job. Um, I'm going to show you them here. The The first one there you can see in the picture is a new bucket. Um, this is a 100 litre bucket and um, it's been really good so far. It's from it's from O'Neill's which used previously was Rambo Tools and um, they do some decent tools at a decent price. Uh, this is where this is the company I buy my water brushes from. Uh, they sell all the stuff that they sell on the website on Amazon. So they're all going to be uh, linked, affiliate linked in the, the description. Um, and yeah, go, go and check it out basically. Um, so as you can see, I already have my bead set. Um, I had this bead that you can see on the, the, the left hand side. And then I also had beads around the windows to set. So um, this job I got here around half eight. Um, and it basically took me four hours from when I arrived till when I finished skimming. It took me probably another 35 to 40 minutes uh, to get everything cleaned up, the place brushed and hoovered uh, and all that sort of stuff. You can also see, you probably just seen it there now. Um, I got a big whack of uh, plaster in my eye, but I'll talk about that in a minute. The other, the other tool that uh, I was telling you about is you can see it hanging on the edge of the bucket. It's a, it looks like a fram pan really, um, but it's it's a scoop for plaster. It gives you exactly a hawk full. Um, Again, I'm going to link this in the description. Um, this was also from O'Neill's Tools. Uh, and and you, you can find all the links in the description. Um, you can't buy direct from the website. Um, and it's a bit cheaper than buying stuff on Amazon. And if you are going to buy direct from the website, just let them know that uh, Danny from Surgeon or Plaster and Santa tell them. Uh, hopefully get a, a little sponsorship or a, something like that there from them. Get them to send me some tools that I can test out. Um, it's where I've always bought my tools. They, they As I said, they were Rambo tools before. Um, and I've always bought all my tools from them. They're, they're water brushes. Um, they're, they're the only place that I can find that sell legitimate uh, horse hair water brushes um, and they're super high quality they're really really good quality uh, it's where also where I actually bought my stilts from um, I have had those stilts coming up on eight or nine years and they haven't missed a beat um, the only issue with the stilts is that I lost a couple of bolts and so now it's only um, four bolts on each um, the, for the where you adjust the stilts there's only literally four bolts left and and the hold me i'm a big heavy guy so the rock solid i think the 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 stilts were rated for like 17 stone and up until very recently i was um the guts of 23 stone and constantly used them so the tools that they sell are super high quality real 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 good tools um so yeah go and check them out but as I was saying there, you'll see it probably the next time I come close to the camera. Um, I have a basically a big swollen eye um, and it's red. It's all red. So what happened was that um, I was skimming the ceiling. You, you've probably seen it in one of the last videos that I uploaded um, uh, when I was plastering a water damaged ceiling in the house. I, um, I dropped a big plop of plaster into my eye and instead of instead of stopping and sort of getting making sure that it was out and every bit of it was sort of gone i wiped my eye with um 
some tissue, run it quickly under the water and get back on with it. Um, and there was obviously a bit of grit or something that was still in there and it, it really aggravated my eye. Um, I went to bed that night and woke up the next morning with my eye glue closed and um, it had massively swelled up. So I'm not exactly sure. It's pro it's pro obviously I've had some some damage done. Um, the swelling did go down, and I I am a lot, but it is like a lot better now. It was still like for a few days after there was like a a slight like scratchiness, um, under under my eye, but that's gone now thankfully. Um, so. When we we're trying to skim a whole room in one day, most most plasters are going to be able to do this. Like it's not, it's not a hard thing to do, uh, and you have to think, you know, you have to think to yourself, how much can I put on and comfortable comfortably trowel up. So what you see here is a, a like a a full room except for a ceiling, um. And this roughly took uh, six, it was roughly six bags of skim. So I mixed a big bucket with, how I measure my skim, it's not by bags, it's by buckets of water. So I use buckets of water to measure out the amount that I'm going to use. So you'll hear me speaking like it took me so many buckets of water. So this one, I had put four buckets of water into the bucket. Um, and that's enough to mix around three bags. Um, so that was the first coat. And then I mixed slightly less the second time. Um, three buckets because I had actually had some excess plaster left over. So I, I mixed slightly less. And you always want to mix slightly less anyway. Um, because it, it's um, you don't need as much on the second coat. Um, and... We, yeah, so basically we, we, we mix up, and we don't put, we don't, and I know for a fact that four buckets of water I can very easily get on the wall before it starts to turn hard. Uh, if, if I came across something that was like six or seven small walls and they're all tiny and had lots of angles, I wouldn't be trying to do this. Um, anything where there's a bit more work you're always better doing less. Um, so like if, if I had to come in here and instead of the four big walls in the chimney breast, there was like seven smaller walls, I wouldn't have done them all at once because there's too many angles to trial and get right. Um, yeah, so um, four, four buckets and it was too much and then we mixed some more uh, and we, we finished um, we sack and coated it. Now, as I'm going here, when I'm when I'm doing big stuff like this, where I'm putting loads and loads on, I I will take my time on the second coat to close it in as best as I can. And a lot of the times, also, what I'll do is like, so I'll get you. You'll see here. I'll finish the walls that you can see in the video. And then I drop back and give them all a flattening. Now I haven't second coated the wall that you can't see, the one that's behind the camera. So um, that's still to be second coated. And the reason why I dropped back was because I touched the, the very first wall that I'd done and it had slightly started to go hard. Um, and it wasn't, it was mainly because I used PVA instead of SBR. So there was a little bit of suction on the, the actual wall itself, um, which means that I have to drop back and close it in. Now, the this, this stuff was still nice and soft in the bucket when I get back to the coat, the, the first wall. Um, and, and that's why it's important to be able to put the plaster on as fast as you can and as tidy as you can so if you do get a situation where um you do have to fall back and start flattening walls and behind yourself that the stuff's nice and soft still for the for the um for second coat what's left i've had a few questions recently about um the use of sbr pva uh, sort of blue grit, red grit, whatever green grit 
there's loads of different brands but um i've had a few questions uh in my pms about um actually what to use so i use sbr on a lot of things um anything that's going to be really high suction i use sbr anything that i want to completely seal off um i use sbr um and it's 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 a really versatile uh sealer it's it's really good and you can go over it when it's completely dry or you can go over it when it's slightly tacky and it's really good to use so i would use that on the likes of like chimney breasts or sort of bigger jobs um where i don't want the stuffs be any suction at all on the wall i don't want the the plaster to have any suction put onto it um so that i have as much time as i can the the um actually trowel it up and stuff and then you have your your grits your blue grit your green grit your all the grits there's several different kinds um and they they are are good to use but it's not something that i really use too much like um one it's so expensive and two it's really hard to get off stuff so like if you accidentally get it on to you know like a door frame or something like that there like you can be in big trouble um a lot of the time you have to paint it on with brushes and like when you're do when you're doing uh private work like this you're you're painting it on with a brush it can't just be rolled on uh because you you're trying to um be not make any mess with it not get it on anything and it's just it, i don't think it's worth the time it also takes a, an incredibly long time to dry compared to sbr and pva um so the, the there is there is um there there are basically places where you can use it and people do use it but it's just not for me and then the last thing um using pva um and I get a lot of comments saying, oh, you should just use SBR, blah, blah, blah. The reason that I use PVA in, in some applications, it would be on walls that sort of have medium to low suction. Um, because a lot of the time, I don't actually want the plaster to hang around forever. So when I'm looking at a job to sort of go a bit faster, I will use PVA. PVA still allows some suction. Um, when you paint it on, you can go over PVA while it's still tacky, which is is perfect for us because um, we we like to get set up and skim straight away. So a PVA works out that way. It kills some suction, not all, um, and it's obviously a good solid adhesive. It's been used for years in plastering, um, and I have had very few situations where. It, plaster hasn't adhered to something using pva um yeah so that would be my sort of go-to and medium to low suction jobs that i'm looking to plaster to sort of not hang about for too long um so so the likes of this i i checked the walls they didn't have high suction um the suction was sort of low on these ones so we use pva instead of sbr and that allowed me to trial this job up faster than maybe i would have if i had used uh sbr um because i had help from the wall sucking moisture from the plaster which means it's which basically makes it set just slightly faster um and that's and that's the reason why we're able to sort of do you know three to four hour full room skims not including the ceiling so when we're traveling up on a job where we're we're doing it all at the same time we're basically skimming it in three to four hours we want to we want to make sure that we get it closed in as quickly as possible so you've seen that i've i've come across this super quick um and i've got it nice and closed in. i've took my time coating and i've made sure that it was nice and closed in um after we do that we're, we're going to use if it depending on your experience level if you've been doing this for a while you'll be able to get nice fresh crisp angles um 
with your trowel. So if it's like a wide angle where two two walls are plastered side by side, um, you can get it okay with your trowel. You know, you get nice crisp angles. But to be honest with you, and um, I, I, I say this because I do it, an angle trial is one of the best tools a plaster can have. So instead of having to wait until these walls have got slightly harder before I can fo fo form my um, form my angle, I hit them with the, the angle trial. And it can still be slightly soft when you hit it with the angle trial, as long as you come and flatten your lanes out. So a, a decent angle trial, um, I use a, a Marshall turn which is sort of a rock solid uh, angle trial as long as you keep it clean and safe in your bag because they can get down very easily. Um, they'll leave a slight line about an, about two inches out from um, the angle either side of the wall just where it slightly digs in. Um, so yeah so you have to just be super careful with that. You you can pull it when it's still wet, but you need to take them lanes out before it sort of sets or the they're really obvious. Um after we've sorted the angles, then we come to cutting our plaster. Now the last few videos I haven't had a cutting trial and I've really suffered for it. I've I've had to do a lot more trialing than I usually would. But um I actually stopped and got a this was a 14 inch uh, Marshall Town Prima shape. Um, the, it's got, if, you, if you're looking online for it, it's gold. I'll, I'll, again, the links are in the description for all the tools that I use. Um, it's gold, it has a red handle, or you can get them with a wooden handle as well. Um, but it's super blunt. Um, one, of the, one of the next videos coming up, um, I actually explain to you in that video and show you the difference between a child that's been completely broken and one that's um, factory worn. Um, and I actually show you the difference. I think it'll probably be in two or three videos time. Um, but I, I got this brand new, so we're cutting the plaster. We're using lots of pressure. Um, at this stage, you can rub your fingers in the skim and it doesn't dig in, but it'll leave, it'll leave like a mark. It it doesn't dig in, but it leaves a mark over the top. And and what I do is I agitate. It's it's sort of like sponge floating for the guys that do that there, but I'll agitate the plaster with my uh, water brush, and it, again the water brush is a a horsehair uh six inch brush, uh. You, again, you can get them from O'Neill's or previously Rambo Tools for the guys that know it is that. Um, they'll be linked in the description and you can agitate the surface of the plaster with them and then you use your, your cutting trowel with lots of pressure and a decent angle and you cut a lot of the plaster off the wall. You, you should be going back to the bucket every time every time you need to dip your uh, water brush you should be having to clean the excess plaster off your trowel. Um, a lot of guys say that they shouldn't be taking that much plaster off the wall but doing because walls are so even in old properties I like putting a slightly thicker coat on that allows me to cut a good bit off to give that nice smooth finish and um yeah so if, if you are liking this video guys i'd appreciate it if you could go into the uh description and have a look at the social media uh leave me a comment in the comment section like the video share if you think it's going to be helpful to someone share the video and then of course um subscribe and hit the the notification button i uh, hit that and then every time i go live you get uh, notified about that um also, if uh, I've said it a few times now, but I'm going to explain it. I have Patreon links. Um, it's an affiliate link. So you go and click, you buy the tool. Um, I get a small percentage. It doesn't cost you any more than it would have anyway. Um, or if you don't actually buy the tool, you just have a look. But then you go on into Amazon and buy something completely unrelated to anything that I linked you to. Um, within 20 to 48 hours, I think. Um, I'll still get a percentage of that. So I had a, a person that had bought a book um, after they had followed a link in my um, description. And basically I got a small percentage of that. So 
it really helps out and then of course you can go and check out my buy me coffee link um and then the patreon the patreon i've started i've started like fully making videos so there actually are going to be a few um uh patreon exclusive videos um and you'll have to obviously sign up to see them uh, and then i'm going to do podcasts and stuff like that there as well um yeah, so ch check out the social media, our Facebook, our Instagram, our TikTok. And we also we also make uh, YouTube shorts. So if you enjoy uh, watching YouTube shorts, go and have a look at ours. We have a lot on there. Um, maybe you'll enjoy it. Yeah, and, and basically then, this is the very last part we're using our Flexi trial. Again, um, this is a Rafina Super Flex 2. Um, it... It um it's a real good trial as well, super flexible, strong, uh, don't get marked or, or dented very easily. Um as long as you they come in a, a plastic sheath, as long as you keep them in their plastic sheath, they're they're they last forever basically. Um yeah, and, and with our flexi trial we're just doing the same thing that we've done previous. Um we're just going around the same direction. We're trialing everything up the exact same way. We're not changing anything and we're just making sure any imperfections or blemishes uh, we're taking out as we go. And then we're just making sure that after we've um, skimmed the wall, we're going to go around and you can see here, there's some plaster on the skirting and on the architrave. Um, we're going to go around and we're going to make sure that that's super clean. Uh, we clean up everything. Um, when when we're going around architrave, um, and architrave and skirting boards, we make sure to try to keep it as as clean as possible right from the start. But it is it is pretty difficult to do to do that. Um, there's a lot of boys to tape them off. I don't actually tape them off i don't i don't see the point in it i'd rather just take the the few minutes um at the end to just give them a clean i feel like it um that it just takes less time to do it that way um so when, when we're trialing up we're just making sure that we're leaving everything nice and uh, nice and tidy um all your holes any holes or bumps or lumps should have been filled in the last trial um if you try to fill it in with the, the the sort of cream that's on the back of your trial it's going to um it's going to look different you can see there i've i've had to cut out a little bit of scrim tape that was shown through um and i take the hard stuff from the edge of the bucket rather than the stuff that's on the trial because the, the hard stuff in the bucket's gonna it's gonna set the same as the rest of the wall. Um really watered down cream from your trial, it doesn't actually do that. And not only that there, it actually won't really fill the hole either. Um once the, the moisture starts to come out of it, it sort of sinks in and it'll leave like patches where you can see it's just like a big, dirty, nasty mistake basically. Um but yeah, so that's going to do it for this video, guys. Um, I hope you've enjoyed. Again, if if you want to, go and have a little look at um, all the links in the description. Um, support me by clicking the affiliate links and buying tools or going to buy other stuff. Um, also, I have another channel where I make gaming videos. Um, I'm going to have that linked in the description if anybody wants to go and check it out. Uh, we've only currently eight subscribers over on that one, so um, I would appreciate it if you could go over and have a wee look. If you don't like it, don't worry. Don't just don't pass on by if you like it. Watch a few videos, basically. Um, yeah, and, and if you could, if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, please uh, subscribe. 92% of the people that watch these videos aren't subscribed and and even if 10% uh, of them people did, we would be well over the thousand mark, which would be awesome for a channel that I started like a year ago. Um, thanks guys. I'll see you in the next video.